Dude, I'm so stoked because we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're going to help people uh, turn unsold rooms into making money. What do you think about that? That was cool. You started talking before we went actual live. That was great. I tried because sometimes what happens is I'm sitting there staring at the screen for a second. Yeah. Well, it didn't work. No. <laughs> well, this will work. I'm Anthony. Welcome to No Vacancy Live. That's my friend Glenn. You're watching the number one show in hospitality. Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, I've got Anthony Melchiori right over there. I'm Glenn Hausman. So great to see you, Anthony. What's going on in your world on this, uh, well, another crappy day? Well, what's going on is that hotel behind you is the Breakers in Palm Beach, and I was supposed to be there actually last week for vacation, and I did not make it on vacation. So thank you for showing that to me and throwing it in my face. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm here about, um, to, to make you feel bad about yourself. That's what this whole partnership is all about, Anthony. I thought that's what our relationship was based on, trying to hurt each other's feelings. Talk about making me feel bad. I mean, Maui, man. I just saw the article about they're increasing the tax in Maui because there's so many visitors. Right. And I, my heart breaks a little bit because I love Maui and I love like how serene it is. And I hope it's not getting overrun by people like you, Glenn, just going there and right. destroying Maui. Uh, do not worry. Um, the good folks in Hawaii will not let me in. So we are safe. We are secure, except me. I've got to hang out here at the Hausman Pool Club, uh, uh, the Hausman Resort Pool Club and Smokehouse and all of that. Although I wish I was at the breaker. So Anthony, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to talk about something a little bit different. One of the things that really uh, is, you know, the Achilles heel of the business, you know, this better than anybody, much better than I could possibly know it, that when the sun comes up, You've lost revenue for hotel rooms forever that weren't filled. So we've got a great, you know, we're going to be talking today about a great idea about how to creatively finance advertising and promotion while helping preserve your cash and use some of those unknown rooms. And, and it's actually you know. something I use as a general manager, the, the young lady who's going to be on the show. Uh, we won't date ourselves, but uh, let's say <laughs> outside of my friend, David <laughs> Malilli, I would say she may be the person I know the longest in the business. Wow. Uh, so yeah, so it, it so so I you I used it back uh, when I was running hotels, uh, the system, but um, you know it's um, it's something that everybody should look at. Listen, what they say about hotel rooms that go empty, it's mm -hmm. like container of milk, right? Right. It's the container of milk that goes sour. Once it's sour, it's over, right? Yeah. A, yep. a, it, it's a hotel room. You have to consume it every day. If you don't consume it. You can't consume it tomorrow because what it was supposed to be yesterday, you lost. So if you can get $200 yesterday on the 15th of July, right? Okay, that $200 is never coming back to you ever, never, never, right. ever, ever. It's gone forever. And people, the sooner hotel managers and owners understand that, uh, the sooner they're hotel managers and hotel owners because that is, it's a disposable product. It just, right. it goes away and it never comes back. It's just like when I go to the store and I buy strawberries, Anthony, I bring them home. I'm all excited. Then the next morning I wake up, they've got fuzz all over them. I don't know what happened, but I can't use them anymore. You, you know what's so funny? It, uh, yeah. Suzanne knows I was struggling for the word in my little brain. Yep. Perishable is the word I was looking for. How'd you know, <laughs> Suzanne? I always say it's a perishable <laughs> item. Not yeah. only she, she, can tell, she can tell. That right. I was looking for that word. Not only is she a crackjack uh, producer, but being a professor at a university, she knows words. So that's pretty exciting. She knows words. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's get into this. So um, since 1992, or should I say nearly 30 years, innovative travel marketing has been saving uh, hotels and airlines millions and millions of dollars by helping plan, finance, and buying media on trade to impact businesses. And that's why we've got uh, Jody Merle here to discuss it. We're going to be having this conversation in a couple of different segments to help bring you through this, help you understand how you could all help to increase your business. So let's welcome to the show, Jody Merle. How are you, Jody? Great to I'm see you. I am terrific. It's great to see you. It's great to see you, Glenn. It's great to see you, Anthony. We're great. Everything is very, very hectic. It's times are different. Times are turned upside down. And I think what we're talking about today is now more than ever, we have a real big opportunity to build awareness, mm -hmm. try to get your brand out there because there are so many places that don't have rooms open or they're not maximizing. So, 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 yeah. like, as I was saying before you came on, we know each other a long yeah. time. What's yeah. the difference between the general manager back in the day when I had hair 
and the general manager today? Is it more difficult to get into the office? Is it more difficult to challenging to to work together? Tell me the the, the pros and the cons. Okay, good. So it's a great comment. I think today many general managers have quite a few layers. There's a lot of layers. There are asset managers. There's general managers. It is not the old school Raymond Bixon hotelier, the international hotelier that understands that marketing has to support sales. It's it's a different way of looking at revenue. Uh, if you they're wanting and there's there's a lot of pressure, cash flow. Right. You know, where I, I have to save cash. I don't have enough cash. I'm doing a lot of jobs right now. Well, I don't have know. sales staff. I can't help you. Right. So, right. so, so what yeah. I, then I'll let you take, because I know you're going to ask her to explain exactly what she uh, And I, I had some background information as well, but go for it, man. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, it, now it's more important than ever. And I know all of you all there saw the release two weeks ago from the American Hotel and Lodging Association that 21 of the top 25 hotel markets are either in a depression or a recession. Urban hotels are down 52% in room revenue in May compared to May of 2019. So the time is now to try to fill up those rooms and maximize that rebound. I mean, you're not selling those rooms anyway, right, Jody? Right. They're not selling those rooms, but more importantly, there's also another side of it. There's 75% that are okay, and they should be getting higher rates, higher revenue, higher occupancy, better clients. That's what you're trying to do right now. So with the pressures that the general managers have, and that's all mm -hmm. you've heard lately at all the industry events, I don't have staff that can handle a proper marketing plan. It's just easier for me to dump it on the OTAs. Right. We don't want that because you want a long-term client base. They're not supporting the sales and marketing efforts of the team to create a segment of their business that raises up the clients they want to have in the hotels. I think what's important, Glenn, is set everyone up for exactly what Merrill does. And then Merrill, you can explain it. And then I have a couple of examples of why I okay. think it's really, really important uh, okay. to, to really use that really income that's going out the window and mm -hmm. really harness that. So go ahead, Glenn. Right. So, you know, uh, basically, listen, even with leisure, leisure travel coming back, there are going to be nights of the week or specific seasonal periods when business levels need a little bit more. Chris yeah. Green, the CEO of Chesapeake, has been on here. Um, Paul Leone from The Breakers, which is uh, behind me, not behind me, whatever you want to see with the green screen. They're realizing that the leisure travel is up, but suddenly everything has shifted. Instead of being full from Sundays to Thursdays, now all of a sudden those nights are empty. And there are still even hotels that are seeing rev par increases and doing certain numbers better than 2019. It's not like they're running 100% every night. So you right. need something to strengthen your brand, bolster, bolster some of your purchasing power, et cetera, et cetera. Right, Jody? No question. No one ever has enough money. Nobody ever has a big enough budget. Even the greatest hotels that don't rest on their laurels, you have the Breakers as a perfect example of somebody who does it right all the time, every year. But every property in major markets don't have that capability. And if you think about the fact that I'm that 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 they're losing 40% of their revenue. Let's say, okay, here you are, you're a hundred room hotel, right, Anthony? You got a $250 average rate. What's happening if you lose one room a night? You could take that revenue and you could get almost a hundred thousand dollar trade budget. What could you do with that? You could go Whoa, farther wait, in and support the team. Yo, I got yeah. I gotta have you repeat that because I'm having a hard time. Uh, with the math on this one, okay. one room night, one yeah. per night for three hundred five yeah. nights. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you mm -hmm. take a hundred rooms and you multiply it by a two hundred and fifty dollar average rate, which a lot of people are dreaming about right now, and it's three hundred sixty five days in the year, comes to ninety one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. It is very wow. simple. So basically, math. Think, of, think of it this way, Glenn. What Jody does is yeah. she she takes an empty room. It's like, I'll give you an example. Your house. Say you pay off your house, right? And now you can use your house or you can rent your house, right? Or you can re refinance your house. Right. So you're basically refinancing your room every day. That room is empty. So there's value to that room. Why? That room in New York City or wherever it is or in Palm Springs, it's like, it's a room. 
in one of the most lucrative, one of the greatest places in America, whether it be New York or Palm or Palm Beach, and it's empty. There's value in that room. So why yeah. not use that value, give it to Jody so she can give you marketing, okay? And she can use that room as basically the cost of doing business for marketing. Yeah, 100%. A 100%. I mean, think about it. Your empty rooms are your buying power. They're your perishable inventory. Right. So if you take the empty rooms and you create value, your empty rooms are a bank. You're the bank. I love I it. Mean, so you can your rooms as financing for other stuff. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony, why don't people bother as much as they used to? Or maybe well, they well, Jody said it in the beginning. Well, there's there's two things. One, we're always under pressure. We're always under cash flow. We on our mind. No, we're going to sell that room, Jody. No, we're going to sell that room. I don't want to commit this many rooms because I'm going to sell those rooms, and I have to be able to show the owner or the asset manager. God forbid. And I was yep. one. I'm a reformed asset manager. And Congratulations. to me that you're giving Jody 10 rooms that she can maybe sell for X amount of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And she's going to give us marketing that may or may not work. Right. I don't like that deal. And that's what a lot of owners and asset managers, I'm telling you here, if you work with her and you work, it's smart and you understand your budget and you understand when you're going to be able to give up those rooms and you understand how Jody can bring that marketing to, to your hotel, you're in a better position. One of the things, like I've been hired several times from different companies that have been on Shark Tank and say, hey, Anthony, the, the sharks picked it up, but no one in the hotel business wants to buy it. The, you know, I can sell it in the retail stores, but I can't sell it to hotels. And it's a perfect hotel product. And I said, say it with me, hotels are cheap. So, so I said, if it's a billion dollar hotel or a trillion dollar hotel or a thousand dollar hotel, uh, they never have any money. Jody knows it better than anybody. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, we, there are a variety of services that can be delivered, but if we just go back to the fact of the interest free fine interest, uh, you know, interest free financing, we've been doing this for 30 years and it's not just 10 rooms. You want to actually incorporate, they should be teaching this in hospitality school. Okay. Barter should be included in every budget because even if you're at 60 or 70%, you're losing in that same hundred room hotel. That's at $250 a night. You could be losing three to $4 million a year of revenue. This is a financing strategy. What do you say to your owner? I'm losing $3 million this year where you're going to say, okay, I'm going to take 5% of this inventory that's sitting here. Mm -hmm. So and I'm going to make something of it to get it off the OTAs, which we'll talk about later. Uh -huh. And we'll move on to putting into a marketing plan that is going to support finding that customer that you want, a higher rated customer, a right. longer staying customer. It's common sense. So, and so it's not the remnant that. space. It's not, it, this is high quality media. We've been doing this for 30 years. And the reason is because, the media are our clients too. So Jody, I mm -hmm. am a hotel general manager. You come in my office. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Tell me, tell me how we work together. Explain it sure. in, in terms that everyone that you know is listening, whether they're hotel managers or not, understand it. So you come in my office. How do we work together? How we very, very simple. Um, we sit down together and we take a look at what are your needs. I mean, we're hoteliers first. So first and foremost, we actually understand sales and marketing needs. If I'm going to sit down with you, A, we may be doing a brand launch from the very beginning. We may be saying, okay, I'm in trouble. It's summer. This is a seasonal effort. So I want to just go back to what you want to do as a hotelier. Anything that you would do on trade, you would buy for cash if you had the money. I right. never recommend anything that you wouldn't do if you didn't have the funds. That's first and foremost. So we're here and he would he would chat with me and he'd say, okay, well, I really need support for my sales team. I only have one girl in right. the travel trade department. She can't go all over the world. What can right. you do for me? Well, you know, then we would do a really tactical campaign and we would boost the travel trade industry. We would boost her meetings business and we'd look at what's logical. What is logical in that market? If it's New York, Chicago, LA, Miami, what's the right thing to do? So we talk, we talk common sense. We are using your rooms as financing, plain and simple, but we're going to give you what you want. And the reason for that 
is that media companies come to us and they also want the new business we're going to direct. So I'm going to tell that general manager, let me work with you to help enhance, expand, or create a budget for you that's going to huh. help the hills and valleys, that's going to kill it during season, right? You have to maximize revenue in season. You can't just sit back and say, oh, if they build it, so, but, but, but I want to back up, but Joey, I want yeah. to back up because I want to, I yeah. want to simplify this because okay. I don't know if people are still understanding exactly. So give us a client. You don't have to name a client. Give uh, us don't a worry client. About it. We're going to have somebody coming on in just a minute or two to help okay. us fully understand how this right. works. So, okay. So, okay. So you New have York, a client. New York hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll keep it really simple. Needs a salesperson. They don't have it. That's a very typical scenario today, right? And they need to reach both the domestic and international, let's just say travel market and meetings market. That's a focus because leisure travels on the rise, meetings are on the rise. Give me a hundred hotel rooms that I'm gonna use, not when you're over 85%, I'm not gonna use them during citywide. I'm going to use them, we're a good time partner. I'm going to pay for the media. I'm going to do a media plan. It's going to include top quality blue chip media that this guy would be paying for if he had the budget. It's going to support his consortia. It's going to support the luxury travel. He now has a plan. I'm going to work with his creative team. We're going to get his de dedicated emails out. We're going to get a banner campaign out. We may do pages as well. And we are going to do a full campaign seasonally to support his efforts in that industry. So maybe it's a hundred rooms, maybe it's 250 rooms, maybe it's that 365 and what do you rooms. And those rooms you basically- And those rooms do. come to me. Okay, well, I'll go through. Innovative Travel Marketing hosts the rooms. We have a client services department. We're very unique. We are not a barter exchange. We are a corporate barter company. And we have a client services department that has a very strong hotel background and they work with the uh, they work with the reservations team and we actually book rooms think about a direct bill account we have 100 rooms it's a direct bill account when we make reservations directly with the hotel this doesn't go out in the marketplace we're a direct bill client those rooms get ticked off a sheet and remember again they get ticked off that sheet we reconcile each month it's the same thing. They have a bank, we have a bank, and we take the rooms down on a regular basis and we book the rooms and who was coming in the door? Mm -hmm. Well, they're gonna have the top media people coming in the door. They're not having discount shoppers come in so, the door. Oh, so, the, so you make a deal with, let's say randomly travel and leisure and mm -hmm. their executives or editors would utilize those rooms. So not yeah. only, are you making money off those rooms, but you're exposing those, your product to the most influential travel related journalists in this particular yes. Uh, yes. example? It's a, exactly. And it, and it is very unique. And what's beautiful is it could be a travel trade. It could be a luxury consumer publication. Maybe it's a regional campaign. And the good news is because we work with so many different industries, whether they're city books, national books, radio, broadcast out of home, right. we work with all kinds of media and corporate clients. You are bringing great people. Think about it. So your room would have gone empty, dumped. You would have given it to a travel agent to attract right. them, right? Why not give it to an end user? There's nothing better than an end user. No, right? That's the person who goes, hey, I'm hanging out here. I'm, I'm in New York. Or I'm in Palm Beach. You got to come check this place out. It's fabulous. They're drinking at the bar. They're eating. They're watching movies. Whatever the cost of your hotel room is, it's going to be covered. So it's a win-win situation of bringing in an interesting group of clients to use the room. And I think an, a, a good solid example mm -hmm. is, let's say we're going to just do a sales meeting in the summer in Florida. It's manna from heaven. You have 100 people coming in. You could get a $50,000 budget and what would you do? You would do a regional staycation campaign that would bring business right. to your property in the summer or maybe you'd do it in shoulder season right. and we would be very tactical and targeted. That yeah. would help 
sales. That would bring in revenue. That's going to raise their image. It's going to raise the brand. That's what we're here to do. It's a highly sophisticated business, but it's so simple. You know, it's interesting because somebody I respect so much, the Breakers Hotel, Paul, is, is one of the best in the industry. And he's uh, Paul is, of course, the managing director, and he's been there for decades. Right. And, and he's using you because he's the best. He's one of the best in the industry. He knows the value. Right. We also have the capability of expanding budgets and creating added value opportunities. The Breakers has the strongest marketing and sales team. They're incredibly... Wow. Amazing. Wow. But they also know that when you can, who doesn't want to buy more for less? Who doesn't want to get the best bang for the buck? I, the I smartest hoteliers in the world do yeah, that. I learned that lesson from my mom who shopped at Filene's basement because she was a great <laughs> uh, bargain hunter. i really like to uh, get our next guest in. But before we do that, I want to just uh, wish uh, Michael Weinberg a belated birthday from yesterday. Uh, happy birthday, Michael. And it's Dan Ryan's birthday today. Happy birthday, uh, brother. We're excited for you. All right. So now for the second part of our conversation, I'd like to focus on how this actually works with the person who's got um, real examples and has worked with Jody before. And I'm talking about, let's welcome to the show, Ms. Denise Randazzo. Welcome to you, Denise. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm very excited to participate. Um, Jody and I go way back. We've known each other for many years. Uh, ITM has always been uh, my go-to for cash and barter. Uh, it's been great over the years. We've been able to launch uh, new uh, new hotels. We've been able to uh, take uh, take some existing budget and expand it so that we can drive business to our own website. Uh, I think most of my goal has always been to drive business to our own website, to our own call centers, and to make and to have direct business. And when you're, when, if I can interrupt you real quick, Denise, um, when you're working with owners and asset managers and stuff, what's their first um, concern about bringing this type of uh, partnership together? What are the things that you've had to manage through? I think the toughest part has always been how are we going to account for it? What is the accounting? What is how does that look on the books? Mm -hmm. That was always their uh, that was always their concern. Um, in my past and working with various owners, we've booked it in different ways, but we've always created a BARTA line. And that right. way we have a BARTA line that sits in the sales and marketing budget as an expense, and it also sits in the rooms budget as a revenue. So it's right. kind of in both places. Right. So that night the, the, the room comes in from Jody, it hits his revenue, but it's taking out as an expense against the sales team. That's correct. Right. So it's pretty simple. Right. It's always been really easy and we've been able to manage that. So, and then depending on how they want to book it, you might book it at cost per occupied room. You might want to book it at best available rate. So and the, the, revenue on manager, the, the revenue manager has to get involved and make sure that they're happy because they they're, they're going to be accountable to the forecast but if it hits his revenue and as long as it's managed correctly it makes sense and you're getting you know a lot of marketing that most hotels can't afford listen most hotels you know even the breakers who can have a bigger budget than most need this kind of um this kind of product because at the end of the day the number one thing that we've heard Jody, when we were working together, the OTAs were just coming on. I remember getting, what was the gentleman's name? I remember getting 10 shares of Hotels.com the day <laughs> it went public. Do you guys remember that? You, I totally remember that. <laughs> did, Lise, did you get any of those shares? No, I, I didn't think it was appropriate being on the property level and to no, take it. To, I didn't know what to do. They, well, they, gifted, they gifted those shares to all the hotel people. Yeah. That's um, cool. Yeah, I, I, a good way to get behind your product. I, think it, I think it was legal. I sold it like and, and put a linoleum floor into my apartment. That's how broke I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, but but that's how so the OTAs have always been the problem, not the problem. It's been great for the hotel industry because a lot of hotels have survived because of OTAs. On the other hand, it's been difficult because it's so easy. Um, and there's not a lot of, again, there's no money going out the door. It's money coming, you know, from the bottom line after the money comes in the door. And so owners have, and, and operators have become used to that and they don't go out and really target market each segment. And that has been um, 
the the biggest problem in our industry. Period. End of story. Dot. That's it. Right. No, right. and you and it's very difficult to compete with their distribution and the amount of money that the OTAs have to put into the market. So by by expanding your own budget and being very targeted and doing it by market segment and by doing niche advertising and going through ITM to help expand that, you you can then start to compete a little bit with that with the OTA market. Hey, Glenn, uh, I got, business. Glenn, I got a little quiz for you. Oh boy. Right, because it's it's twenty five minutes in. So at twenty five minutes in, I always have a quiz for Glenn. Uh, what does the movie of the week and hotels dot com have in common? The movie of the week and hotels dot com have in common. I have no idea. Actually, they're both created by Barry Diller. Oh my goodness, that's mm -hmm. interesting. I, I I don't know if you guys know who Barry Diller was uh, or is. is, is. Uh, yeah. uh, he actually, him and his uh, wife Diane Vaughn Furstenberg, that wife, girlfriend, girlfriend. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Um, <laughs> I think they donated five hundred million to create this insane park on the on the west side of New York. Yeah, that park that you yeah. see with all the like little pillars that they they literally gave it to New York City. But anyway, so Barry Diller went from being a, a, a movie producer to owning all the, a lot of the third parties. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the thing I'm mostly concerned about when it comes to these uh, OTAs and stuff like that is I just saw a Trivago commercial and Trivago guy wasn't in it anymore. So I'm a little concerned that he's out of listen, work right now. Listen, <laughs> listen, my wife, every time the Trivago guy comes on and um, uh, what's that guy from Hotels.com, the tall captain looking guy? Yeah, yeah captain. Captain, captain Obvious. obvious. Yeah. My wife looks at me with just utter like you're such a failure it's like, why isn't that you? How is that Trivago guy got that commercial and you don't got? I said, well, I did a Hotels.com commercial. She goes, yeah, but he does it every day. So <laughs> so Trivago guy and Captain Obvious are two things. And I truly think Captain Obvious came out of somebody watching Hotel Impossible and me pointing out all the obvious and okay. going, oh, look, it's Captain Obvious. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that's great. Jody? <laughs> I think I think Denise has, has worked with some brilliant people who can com uh, combat Captain Obvious. Uh, I agree, and I think that some of the uh, some of the actual campaigns that you did and worked on that completely created brands could blow them away. Jody, I think you could talk about that. Yeah, you are amazing because you have done something that no other guest has ever done. Help me with an incredible segue. So Denise, <laughs> let's, bring it, let's bring it right back uh, to you. All of this okay. stuff is absolutely yeah. true. Can you give us a real life example to start about a deal that you worked on that made sense for all the parties involved and how that went down? Right. Yeah, and well, going back um, kind of in the early days, um, I worked with Ian Schrager Hotels for many years. For over 15 years, I worked with Ian. I'm not familiar with that name. Who? who? <laughs> <laughs> and then on and off over the years, I've come back and helped him launch uh, various, uh, various brands. Including publicly, and his newest venture. That's correct. So we launched public um, a couple of years ago. Uh, well, first we launched it in Chicago and then we launched it um, in New York City. And each case, um, well, we were introducing a new brand. So we needed to expand the budget. Uh, when we were in Chicago, we were in a market that we had not previously been in. So we also needed to have some real tactical, uh, tactical marketing initiatives so that they handled all the different market segments. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Chicago is a big group market. Chicago has a lot of um, group needs. We knew, which was a little bit different for us being in New York, where we had more transient business than group business. Right. And the hotels were a little smaller in New York. Um, so that when we opened up the Chicago property, we knew we needed to target that group market. And Jody was able to help us um, go into the mice industry, into all the meetings publications, and to really position that new hotel in that Chicago market as, as a group destination, in addition to as a corporate and leisure and destination. What, and if you wrote a check, what would that have like been? You may not, not give me the exact number, but like, what are we talking about with, for that kind of exposure? I mean, what would a budget be if you, you were going out to market like without doing this kind of uh, um, deal? I'm trying to think. Like, I know I've, Jody and I, we've had many different I mean, budgets. It was, it was, it was a, let's just gently say at least $100,000 of room. That's right. what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely think so. And it, it, Chicago's 
a funny town. It's very much a local town. You really have to embrace the local audience and the neighborhood. So, oh. you know, we really did a lot of that because it's not like everybody knows Ian in New York. Everybody knows Ian in Miami and LA. Chicago, he really had to lay down his brand. And that took a little bit more work. And it's the kind of town that, you know, they, you have to embrace it. And he did fabulous. Denise, you did fabulous direct marketing as well. And when funding is needed for that, yes, there's cash under your mattress. We can be the bank to do those beautiful, you know, what, what should be the name of the pump room was like brilliant, Denise. It was a fabulous campaign you did. What was so that? What, should be what was that? Oh, I remember that. I remember yes. that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That and that was all done through this. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, how that so because you explain to me how that worked. And before you do that, uh, for those of you who um, are new to the industry, uh, we mentioned uh, the acronym MICE. It stands for Meetings, Incentives, Conferencing, and Exhibitions. Uh, Jody, take it away. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. In that particular case, there's a cost for printing and a cost for developing uh, a mailing. And so whatever that cost was, in this case, we may have done a relationship with a printer. And normally if you're working with Ian, it's his very designated team. So we may just fund that. You know, I write a check and, and I can write a check as well as trade with media. So it's all a financial strategy. Denise is smart enough. Ian is smart enough to know there are always rooms that can pay for a fabulous campaign. We only deal with the highest quality medium. I wouldn't ever tell Ian or Denise to do something they shouldn't do. And, you know, even just his brand launch. I mean, Denise, you were right there when right Paramount really opened there. its doors. So right. when we first launched Ian Schrager Hotels, um, you know, we needed to, we were coming onto the scene. Uh, the Royalton Hotel had already existed. We were launching the Paramount. It was a new concept. It was cheap chic. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to be in. Uh, we wanted. We wanted to be in prime media. Uh, Jody helped us secure commercials on uh, on the Academy Awards. Wow. We did CNN. We were Saturday Night Live. My um, those kinds of things we wouldn't have been able to do without without doing the barter agreement. Yeah, and those because are, that those really expanded it. Really the, the Morgan's Hotel is the first lifestyle hotel in the city. I really think the Algonquin was in 1907, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> but that was before lifestyle hotels were lifestyle hotels. But mm -hmm. the Morgan Hotel is the first, then the Paramount, then the Royalton. And those were real lifestyle. And it was changing. It was the first time these hotels were introduced into the public where the lobby became the thing, where that sexy thing became the thing. You as a general manager had to kind of walk around like I am now without a tie and, you know, and kind of be, be that, you know, um, be that kind of hotel. And uh, it was, it was, I remember that. I remember how they were in everything. Like you yeah. couldn't get away from those hotels. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, you know, we were promoting lobby as social, you know, so lobby socializing. So that was a whole new kind of concept or, or bringing back an old concept of right. having, you know, lobby as the, so as a, a place to meet and greet and to socialize. Uh, we also knew we were having a new customer and that's why we needed new media and we needed to be where we thought those customers were. And that's, and we wanted to make sure that those customers saw us and they, and they understood yeah. the type of properties we were. And Glenn, it was so critical. I'll tell you why it was critical. Yeah. It was critical because they were doing two things. They were establishing a lifestyle brand. They were establishing kind of a cool thing. I mean, Randy Gerber was running the bar years and years ago. Sure. And it, it was cool. But also, they wanted to bring everybody's focus to the lobby because the rooms were, you know, it's New York City, old hotel. You have to go outside to change your mind because some of the rooms are so small. So when you're going into a hotel in New York City, you don't want to be in the room anyway. You want to be in the lobby. You want to kind of be around the cool people, all the designers, right. everybody's coming in. So it was a great way of taking the smaller, these small room hotels and really make it the hottest hotel in, in the city. And if you have a marketing campaign to really kind of take your eye off while well, the rooms are small, the, the, everything that's happening is happening in the lobby. So it was really, to me, in all the years I've been doing hotels over 30 years, 35 years, it was probably one of the smartest ways to really come into market. And I didn't know Jody until this second, you were behind all that. No. Yes. I right, was. And, I mean, 
and and you know, and, and this is where Ian's genius too. You know, Ian yeah. drives a lot of the marketing. I do a lot of the tactical. I do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. But a lot of it is, you know, it's his vision. It's his world, and that's what's uh, what's so great to be a part of too. Right. Yeah. Well, 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 Ian. I had one interview with Ian. He wanted me to run the. What's the one on? Uh, with the, not the Hudson, the one right next to it. That's um, he had that for a little while when he was running. Oh, that home. was that. Yeah, that's when he took over the empire. The empire. So he. So I get a call. He wants me to interview. There's this young lady in front of me. She's in there for 45 minutes. You know, he had a glass office, so I saw her in the office. I walk in. I was a young manager. He said, "Listen, you come highly recommended from everybody I know. I heard you're the turnaround guy. You know, basically." shake my hand. You're going to get the job. You'll get a call. The interview was five minutes. I walked out. I called my wife. I said, I didn't get the job. She goes, why didn't you get the job? I said, because he told me I got the job. Every time right. I'm told I get the job, I never get the job. <laughs> I never, ever spoke to Ian again after that. <laughs> and the young lady got the job. And unfortunately, six weeks later, she no longer had the job. Uh, that's too bad. We got to get Ian on the show to continue our tradition of having people that either fired you or never hired you. On <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got a question here from our a friend of the show, Michael Weinberg. Help me understand. Jody gets paid in the ROI of the room water? In other words, yeah. after no. So yeah. how, no. could you just go through it one more time? Jody? Sure, sure. No, the hotel enjoys the ROI of the the hotel enjoys the ROI of the room barter. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are using the rooms. We are trading the rooms with the media. There's certainly a difference in cost. I get the hotels are paying fair market value. So as far as the hotel goes. The room rate is $150. Uh, I'm paying $150. Their clients are going in, they're paying their incidentals and their taxes. Okay. We get paid as we are retrading to the media. That's where we get paid. We get paid that money. We also do cash media buying. Obviously, we buy extremely well. There's right. a lot of people we just do cash buying for because we know what we're doing in the hotel industry. Mm -hmm. So they call us. You know, I always look at floating the boat first. We want to float the sales and marketing, the B2B. We do that first. And then the cream and the, the lifestyle, normally with some of the hoteliers I work with, whether it's Ian or Andre Velaz or Faena, you know, these guys have three or four PR companies that are really killing it. And we are supporting sales and marketing. So I'm not, I'm not charging a fee. So I'll go back to that because obviously there's a question. As a barter company, I am not a barter exchange. Barter exchanges may charge barter fees or 10% fees. We don't do that. It's company to company to clarify that. And we're trading the rooms for media. When I trade to the media, there is a difference in my cost, even if it's 10 or 15% on a commission basis. We get paid by the inventory we own and remarket. Yeah, I think that's so I'm not getting paid on the ROI. I think to simplify it uh, for everyone is mm -hmm. I give you a room. The room is valued at $10,000. You go and right. give me $10,000 worth of media buy. What right. you do with the rooms and how much you get paid for those rooms is none of my business. I'd imagine most of the time you make some money on it and sometimes you lose money on it. That's oh, your- Oh, I have a few, that, few places right, closed. That, that, right, we that's try to make money because I have a very professional seasoned staff. Right, but that's- And it's with me for a really long right. time. All I yeah. care about is Joe Manager, and, and I'm kind of going back to my meetings with Joe. All I care about is give me $10,000 worth of marketing. Here are my rooms. Make sure that my team knows how to account for those rooms. Right. And have a nice day. I'll see you next week. I, that, I, I that, want, that, that I want Michael, and I want Michael, I'm glad it makes sense, Michael, but I really want to be clear about it because it is a mystery. I do get asked how I make money all oh, the time. Wow. Okay. So here we go. Yeah. We do trade. We have a lot of inventory that we have in house and we manage it. It's not a trading desk, but obviously we know what things cost. Right. And let's say I'm buying media that has an unbelievable value at a hundred thousand dollars, but my cost on it is really only 80 or 70, but even at a hundred, it's half the price you could buy for it. Right. I'm going to make money on the difference because we do do cash media buying. And there is another segment to our business. We have a few different segments to our business. There's another segment to our business. There is a $20 billion corporate barter industry out there. Okay. And everybody is into maximizing their revenue. So while they're into maximizing their revenue, they may have ocean spray cranberry juice, 
that needs to have a sales meeting at, uh, you know, at the, at the, at the public in New York. Mm -hmm. And so that corporate barter company, I'm not a corporate barter company. I'm a hospitality expert, mm -hmm. but that corporate barter company will pay me for my services. So we get income from a variety of places. Right. They'll right. pay me for my services to place that group. The hotel loves the business. These are top corporate clients. And what's going to happen? They're going to get incremental revenue and food and beverage as well. And I will get paid uh, a commission or a fee from a corporate barter company. So we have different outlets where we make money. It, it's okay, cheap for well. the hotel. The cheap for the hotel is pretty easy. Uh, yes. But for you, man, it seems like a complicated business. It is. And I'm very fortunate to have done it for a long time. And we're still successful. And I will say we have many of our clients for a very long time. And isn't that the secret sauce? Right. Because if you have your clients that come back to you on a repeat basis, you know them. We're always looking for new business. Well, Jody, how long have you been working with the breakers? Like now seven. you're gonna date me. Do no, I just, I'm just gonna say more than 25 years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been working with Ian more than 25 years. Right. A lot of hotels. You know. And you've been working for Denise a while as well. Well, yes. Cody and I, we've had a long term relationship that even, you know, when I when I stopped working for Ian Schrager and I went to different brands and I went to different hotels, I've been able to tap into Jody and her organization to even, do, you know, it might not be a whole launch of a pro, uh, of a hotel. It might just be a small need to, you know, maybe it's a need period during, you know, down during a downtime. And I'll be like, OK, let's let's you know, let's focus on this niche or let's focus on that niche. So we've been able to do it's very, very large. Right very, small very timely ones. right now because people it, are coming out of COVID and yeah. there's not a lot of there's not a lot of no budget. Cash flow. And so right now your your company couldn't be more helpful. It is. It is. But you know, it's it's timely anytime. And I, I I appreciate that. Yes. The cash flow, no doubt about it. Hotels have a lot of inventory. They shouldn't be letting it go to waste. That's like leaving money on the table. You don't want to leave money on the table. No, no. But, you know, with, with Denise, just briefly, it's very, very interesting because, you know, we, 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 there are times too, when you talk about hotel managers and management companies, you know, Denise was working with Mandarin and a lot of times, oh, all my money is going to corporate. I have to support all the cor corporate funding for marketing. I don't have any money left. So what did we do, Denise? We, we, you know, right. We went into tell them what we did. We were very targeted on your the top feeder right. market. We, very, we were very targeted in a local market. Um, it was a market that uh, Mandarin Oriental didn't have a lot of experience in. It was in the Las Vegas market. And we really targeted the Las Vegas locals business. And that really was very helpful to us. That brought yeah, in it's, the it's, patients. It's funny you just said that. I just uh, uh, had drinks with a good, or actually lunch with a good friend of mine who's an entertainer in Vegas. And uh, he is as Vegas as they come. He's been there for years. And he said, if you don't take care of the people that live in Vegas from a food and beverage standpoint and a uh, room standpoint, you're done. It's like you can have all the conventions you want. But when it's slow, we use Vegas. It's not like New Yorkers. New Yorkers go home and they don't use New York. Vegas people use Vegas. So, so he just told me that last week. That's a really yep. good point. No, it's true. And and the locals market in Las Vegas really feeds the strip. Um, not only does it feed the strip from, you know, downtimes or just normal local business, but there it's the recommendation and the word of mouth. Right. You know, if you're if you're trying to build a brand in the town, you need to you need to reach out to that locals market. You need those cab drivers. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Michael's yeah. the questions today. Uh, I can envision some of your leads coming from CVBs and they work with a hotel or hotels. Do you do any of that as well? Jody? Sure. Yeah. We, we get asked to support CVBs. We, we actually did a summer plan uh, for the Palm Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau. That was terrific because funding always comes from the local market. Whatever CVB you are, you've got your hotels, they give the money. And they were brilliant enough, Jorge and his team, and of course the leaders of the major hotels in Palm Beach, whether it's Breakers or Boca, or PGA, the head of the committees got together and said, yeah, we really want to expand our market. We want to do more digital advertising. We want to do New York. So we did it. Yeah, it was great. Right. 
Uh, fascinating. Um, Denise, any final thoughts before we uh, let you go and we start to head towards uh, wrapping up and stuff? No, I think, I mean, for anything, it's it's timeless. Uh, Jody and I have known each other. I think the strategy really helps you maximize your budgets. Um, you know, you, you create this budget out of your perishable inventory. And uh, I know even in my in my current work right now, Jody's helping with uh, working. We're working with an L.A. property right now that is, you know, a little bit uh, needs additional cash. It doesn't have a lot of cash right now. So cash flow is a little bit tough. And, uh, you know, we're, we're working together on that. She actually just put a group into the hotel to use up some of the barter. So it's been great. And what's nice about that, too, even when the group comes in, we barter the rooms, but all the food and beverage and the AV and everything else is all ancillary revenue. So that would have been revenue that we wouldn't have had. So Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing everything. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So before, I mean, before we get to just wrapping up, I just want to say, yeah. oh, my goodness, I didn't even realize it was uh, Colleen Norman's uh, birthday on Sunday. I know I wish her a happy birthday. How do you know all of our viewers' birthdays? <laughs> I know it's really funny, right? Uh, I pay attention. I, you know, uh, it's it, my uh, birthday. You don't even know my birthday. Right. Yeah, of course I, I do. I have no idea when your birthday is. I've completely forgotten. But Facebook or LinkedIn will remind me, and then I'll look like I know what I'm talking about. All right. Okay. Let's start this section over again. Jody, that was really interesting. But I think what's really important is that we just go through it a little bit of a, uh, of this again, so people understand it. What sure. percent of rooms? Would you recommend they really start allocating towards this in order to be successful? At least one room, but eh, I, I'm feeling if you want no, to. You're, no, no, no. You need to. You you, you don't want to build a fifty million dollar hotel or have a fifty million dollar hotel and give somebody a twenty five thousand dollar budget to help them succeed. But if we go back to the <laughs> basics of looking at, and we've seen that so many times, right, Anthony? It's a I'm laughing because that's exactly it. It's like, well, I'll give you twenty five thousand, but I invested fifty million into my hotel. Exactly. And it's ludicrous. Yeah. But what are you what's your real occupancy? So, I mean, think of it logically. You don't want anybody to touch or compete with your existing cash customer base. So in summary, you're going to take five percent. Even Really, if you take five percent of your unsold rooms, you're really buying a very significant budget. I mean, I'll go tactically through that five percent of your $4 million that's sitting there going empty could be a $200,000 marketing budget. And that's not too much, obviously, mm -hmm. because you've got a lot of segments you want to reach. Take 5% of rooms. You would have dumped them on the OTAs. You wouldn't be getting a, a long-term client. If you consistently take 5% of your unsold rooms, even at 80%, uh, then you want to make sure that 5% of those rooms very simply can be turned into a significant marketing campaign that's going to float the boat. So it's going to reach your different industry segments, travel, meeting, incentive. You're going to also reach your local market, and then you're going to go into your top feeder markets, maybe to boost corporate business. But if they're not sitting on OTAs, you are ultimately, as a long-term strategy, and this is a financial strategy, you are really going to help build your brand because the people you're going to get in are just incredible. We just did this with a local West Coast hotel. They wanted, uh, they wanted much more a uh, higher rated customer. And what happened is there was chatter about it after the campaign ran because we really followed the money. We followed, a, a, well, I'm looking for a $250,000 household income. So we approach it very strategically. Give me a budget. I'm going to find your sweet spot. And we did. And wow. the, staff, the staff said, wow, people are buying more expensive wine. Got really cool cars out there. They're uh -huh. using the spa. What's happening here? So it can make a difference and it has to be a long-term strategy. You want to be consistent in whatever you do. That's not a one-shot deal. And then you're still going to go back and dump yeah, it on the yeah, other very much, in our, very much in our business, it's about this quarter, this month, today. What can you do for me today, Jody? Hey, I just gave you $50,000 worth of rooms and I'm not sold out today. Like, why yeah. am I sold out? What are you doing for me, Jody? What are you doing for me, Jody? What are you doing? If you look at it that way, instead of like, 
Paul at the Breakers looked at it, it's a long-term strategy. Part of my arsenal, not my entire arsenal, but part of it, part of my um, budget, not all of it. If you don't look at it that way, then you probably shouldn't do business with Jody because you have to look at it from a long-term strategy. It works. It's kind of like same thing with PR. It's like you just don't turn on the PR switch. You, they they, they got to work yeah. it, and it takes, and P- it takes a while. Anthony, PR is a perfect example because we are floating the boat, right? If we pop in a big ad in the New York Times or we're popping in ads in very high profile magazines, what's going to happen? The editors are going to call those hotels and say, hey, what's happening here? And it absolutely gives a halo effect to public relations. Mm -hmm. And that is you can't you can't put a value on the amount of free media you get from public relations no. so everything we do has to be consistent and ongoing mm-hmm. plus who has the money to really go after a reader's choice award to go after industry accolades that create that value and sense of urgency and so i have a great client the lodge at woodlock in 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 oh, holly pennsylvania god bless the lodge at woodlock we've been working with them for a very, very long time, going on almost 14 years. And so I, we we had to get the, please let's just do this consistently every year. And they did consistently every year. And we were very tactical. Where are they getting business from? New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Philadelphia. We, we, we just hit it and we hit it consistently. And the owner said to me, you know, Jody, when am I gonna get these awards? I said, well, you can't buy them. You have to earn them. But if you're out there and you're in it to win it and they see how beautiful your product is, Ultimately, this will happen. It is definitely a world's best uh, destination spa. Yeah, that's so, and, uh, story. And yes, we're talking about doing this during shoulder season or low season, not during city wides or special events when you're really making your money. So you don't have yeah. to worry about that. But the last thing that I'm thinking about is I'm a GM, right? Mm-hmm. Or I'm in charge of sales and marketing. I'm overwhelmed. There's so much happening right now. This sounds too complicated and difficult for me to deal with. What's the actual time as uh, as someone at the hotel level has to put into this? Uh, the people at the hotel only have to send their creative. They don't have to do anything. We do a media plan. We give them the material specs. We do everything a regular agency does. They don't have to do anything. In many cases, we are acting as sales and marketing consultants because we can't help ourselves. We're all hoteliers. And so we make recommendations. I'll have people who will just call me and say, Jody, do what you know how to do and do it. And then we have people we have to go through and say, this is what my recommendation is. So they'll go with our recommendation because our background is the hospitality industry. So we know what works, whether it's a small hotel or a large hotel and in different markets. It's not hard. It's very simple. Give us a call you know, check us out. And we work with you to make a very simple plan. We actually do all the work. We show the proof of performance and hopefully they show the results if they do consistent campaigns. That's the secret sauce. Do it consistently. Uh, so uh, where do we go to learn more? Boom. There it is. Go to uh, well, Innovative Travel Marketing, www.innovativetravelmarketing.com. And obviously anybody can call me or post me, write me on my LinkedIn and, uh, or on our website, my email is there as well. And my cell phone, please feel free to call. Beautiful. Any final thoughts before you go, Jody? Sure. I really hope everybody will look at transforming their rooms as a really significant financial strategy. It's a winning strategy. We want you to think like owners Ask your owner, does he want to write a check or does he want to write an em- use an empty room? Yeah. Always remember that. It's like right. that's, that's the answer. answer. Uh, think about this, Glenn. Think about buying an Airbnb and never renting out the rooms. Right. right. Well, you go down with those rooms when you can use them to maybe, you know, to generate more revenue by more Airbnbs. Yeah, I love it. This is absolutely great, Jody. Thank you. Thank you. Put barter in your put barter in your budget. Make it part of your economy. That's going to be a bumper sticker. Put barter in your budget. We can <laughs> yeah. do a jingle. Put barter in your budget. <laughs> you see? Okay. <laughs> I love it. Jody, thank you so okay. much. For- thank you so much. Thank you, right, Jody. Me. Uh, this is really great because it really supports the sales and marketing efforts with expanding the funds, impacts that low season business and gap periods, right? Are you going to apologize to Jody for cutting her off before she said uh, Well, she, she was speaking a little too slow. Hold on. We can get her saying <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure.
Okay. Thank you, Jody. Thank I'll, you. I'll keep her on so long, it'll feel awkward for everybody. How's that? Yeah. All right. All right. See you there, Jody. <laughs> he, he, uh, he, uh, Jody, just so you know, I know you're listening in the back. Uh, he has a tendency of doing that, so I wanted to correct him. Sorry. I do. I do. I do. I'm so sorry. Also, like I said, support sales and marketing efforts with expanded funds. Impact that low season business and gap periods, right? Test new markets, launch new products, test new media, handle an unexpected dip in occupancy or failed product. This is the stuff that they could help you do. So please, I encourage you all to check out Innovative Travel so Marketing. I, I have yeah. a question for you. Yeah. Michael, one of our favorite uh, you know, viewers, mm -hmm. what is he bartering for all this airtime that he's getting? Because uh, we, we asked about 37 questions for Michael. Uh, that's a really good question. So uh, Michael, <laughs> apparently uh, you owe us. Or maybe we'll just put it under, it was his birthday. So that was- uh, That's you know. right, that's yeah. right. All right, my brother. All right, so tomorrow we got another great show with you uh, all out there. I cannot remember who the guest is. Oh, we got a couple of great executives uh, tomorrow coming on the show. All right, so sorry. <laughs> That'll be great. A couple of guys that you never hear from, but you need to listen to. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. Remember, we already know a lot of you are listening to the audio version of the podcast. Make sure you download that and get this show. Listen to it again so you can really understand what's going on and do that by subscribing at Apple Podcasts, going to iHeartRadio, getting your shows at Stitchers, or basically anywhere you like to get your shows. We're syndicated all over the place. If you want to reach out to Anthony, find him at Anthony Hotels. And of course, I am at Traveling Glenn. Anthony, it's great seeing you today, man. You know, there's I figured out the numbers. There's 400,000 podcasts being posted, I think, in a week or a month or whatever. And we're within the top 10,000, which is 0.05% of all podcasts in the world. Yeah, that's right. Mind-boggling. And most people listen to us, as you know, most people listen to us. Not, they don't watch us. They mostly listen to us on the podcast. So that's where you want to go. If you want to listen to us on the run or jog or um, while somebody's talking to you, you don't want to pay attention, just put your headphones on. Uh, that's typically what I do. Um, and that was my that was my great writing the, uh, the subway tip. They always put the headphones on, listen to something, ignore that's going all around you. Yeah, right, I, just tell, I just tell my friends, just that crazy if you're on the subway somebody bothers you yeah <laughs> that's a great idea too all right everybody you've learned a lot of practical advice today from how to improve your business get more people in the hotels while also getting great advertising but even more importantly you learned how to deal with crazy people on the subway all right everyone remember you've got one life so blaze on and be kind to yourself see you all tomorrow <laughs>